Ashton here with Love Life and Disability. So welcome back to another episode of Love Life and Disability with me, Kay Ashton. Today I am here with Rethink Mental Illness Manchester Group. It is a group for people affected by severe mental health illness and they've come together to share information and support one another. Today we are joined by Mary, the group coordinator, Neil, who does some amazing artwork with us, and then we've got Charlotte, who is an associate um, lecturer at Art Foundation at the MMU and is also volunteering. Over the past few weeks, Neil has been doing Everybody Draw, which is a 12-week series of mindful drawing sessions. So welcome aboard, guys. How are we all today? Well, thank yeah, you, bad, all thanks. things considering. <laughs> yeah. Great, thank you. Awesome. So, Neil, I was wondering if you can tell everybody a little bit more about Everybody Draw and what, what to expect in this 12-week series. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a drawing class, which um, it doesn't necessarily like um, sort of teach any sort of technical or sort of almost any sort of practical drawing skills. Um, it's more of a sort of opportunity for people to just um, just relax and kind of uh, take their mind elsewhere. Um, it's designed to be like super accessible uh, and inclusive. So all you need is um, like a simple pencil um, and any piece of paper. Um, and you don't need any sort of um, technical skills to get involved. There's no barrier to entry, as it were. Um, so there's 12 different ideas, 12 different prompts, if you like, to, to just get you started, to just make some marks. And um, it, it can be quite quite a mindful thing to do. And, you know, people sort of say that, you know, it's a uh, it's kind of an escape from all the other things that are going on. It's just like you really kind of just lose yourself in just making marks on a piece of paper and it can be quite meditative in that way. Um, so there's 12 different, 12 different ideas. Um, and um, yeah, we're, we've done two so far. That's right, isn't it? So yeah, week three, week three next week. Um, and um, yeah, I think so far it's gone really well. I've had some, had some good feedback. It is really fantastic sessions. And I do quite like the idea that you don't really need anything. Like you don't need all the paint brushes and you don't need all these tools and different pencils. Even if you've only got a pen, you can still participate. Mm -hmm. And some yeah. stuff that we've been doing recently from a disability perspective, um, in one case, it's going around your hand. Now, if you're visually impaired, you might be able to do that because you can feel mm -hmm. your hands to go around. And yeah, I think it's it's incredible sessions and looking forward to seeing what else um, happens. Because I do find it quite peaceful. It's quite mindful as well. Thank you. Charlotte, yeah. how, what's your thoughts on the psychology side of things? Like, how, how is it possible that art can take us away to this um, like magical place um, for some people? Um, I think it's, it's like, it's very important that we take the time to do this sort of practice because, um, a lot of things in life, like can fill up your mind and it's very important that we take the time to be present in what we're doing in, in like a mindful sense. So in our breathing, in our actions, and, um, it's, just it's very necessary and a lot of people don't actually take the time to do it so um it's really important that yeah from a psychological perspective that we actually take the time to be present in ourselves as we're doing a very simple task um and neil's really good at setting up tasks that is are both like intriguing and um yeah that they're exciting enough to make you focused and mindful but they're also like yeah, they, they're very grounding as well. So, yeah. Thank you. And, well done, Mary, <laughs> and Mary, as the group coordinator, how did you go about getting the um, sponsorship for the monies for, for this to go ahead? Yeah, so we'd, um, back, back, back when we were still meeting face to face as a group, the venue that we were lucky enough to meet in, in the centre of Manchester, um, um, Neil was managing it. And so we already had this relationship, we knew, you know, we knew Neil, Neil knew about the group. And then we, when lockdown happened, we took the group online and it became weekly. And so we were, you know, really looking for those kind of activities that would 
help us to relax. You know, we're a group of people who have either got a family member with, you know, quite severe mental health challenges or people who themselves have got lived experience of a range of different conditions. So it was, you know, finding ways to support each other. And so I got in touch with Neil um, and Neil said, yeah, we are. Well, I've just so happens I've developed this, you know, this fantastic um, um, course of, um, you know, kind of really accessible mindful drawing. And Neil really kindly came along and ran a couple of sessions for our group. And the response was just really positive. Um, and, you know, going into winter, we thought, actually, it'd be nice to have some more of this to see us through, you know, you could see the other lockdowns coming. So based on the feedback that we'd had from our group members, we put together a funding bid to Forever Manchester. Um, she's obviously a Manchester-based charity and said, you know, look, this has proven really popular with our group. Um, we really think it could help people through, you know, the colder, the colder months being in lockdown. Um, and and um, yeah, and, and, and we, you know, we brilliantly, we got the funding. So, you know, so here we are. And I think, you know, the response to it has shown what, you know, what the demand is. We've had really good turnout and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's great really positive thing to be able to offer there's always a need for um mental health and well-being um things out there especially at the moment as we know with the pandemic and stuff um just to lift people up but neil at what point did you realize that art could be a way forward for well-being um well last year so mary mentioned that i run um, community space in centre of Manchester um, called the Old Bank and um, we were sort of very much in the um, business of encouraging public gatherings um, so like March last year we obviously realised that very quickly that we couldn't do any of the things that we were currently doing so we very quickly moved everything online um, and um, we did a whole series of different discussions and workshops and events and meetups drawing classes and pottery demonstrations and all sorts online um, and so part of what we were doing I, I, I piloted this um, sort of online drawing class um, and we just started doing it and um, we just kind of making it up as we went along but the feedback was that um, actually people it really it was like a really lovely thing for people to do on Tuesday evening and I kind of set out for it to be a little bit more academic than it currently is um because i've run drawing classes before and they were like sort of um heavily based in sort of art history and um trying to almost like teach people something but i think people just really enjoyed a um an activity that kind of took them away from everything else that was going on the noise that surrounded like their lives and the um sort of isolation um it was a real a really great sense of being together on a group call and just doing an activity and you know part um, within part of the drawing class will be like maybe 10 or 15 minutes where nobody's saying any, any, anything, but we're just listening to each other draw. Um, and there's just like a really set, a real good sense that there is, there's someone else there doing something and you're doing something and, you know, we're connected in that way and, and it's become quite special in that way. Um, and so um, every, every time I've done this little drawing class, it's, it's become quite a sort of close knit little community and like little sort of group um, activity and people have, I think, re just really valued that sort of, sort of sense of togetherness and and the, and the fact that there's no barriers to entry to it. You know, anyone can participate. You don't need any specific, yeah. um, uh, you know, technical um, skills or um, tools. So um, yeah, I think that's what is a sort of yeah sense of community and, and gathering. And one thing I do quite like as well is all, when you set out um, different tasks each week, even though everybody's getting the same task, it's a completely different piece that everybody creates. Mm -hmm. And that's what I find really interesting. It's even if you're to copy another image, it's and a teacher is to teach you and an artist is to come in. Everybody's picture could be so, so different. And yeah. They may have added their own their own style to it. They may have added their own thoughts and feelings to it. And when you start to see those on like the Padlets that yeah. and Charlotte creates, it's it's just incredible. And the amount of people as well that are proud of their work and are willing to talk mm. about it, as you say, it's a sense of community and bringing people together. 
Mm -hmm. What other projects do we have coming up at, at the moment? Yeah, so we've um, so we've got um, we've got Neil. I'm lucky to have Neil up until the fourth of May, um, and then so 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 every everybody draw is running as kind of a distinct project, and I think. We're gonna well, once that's finished. We're just gonna see how it goes, aren't we, Neil? I mean, we'll be in a we'll be in a bit of a different space come May. So you know, it, it you know, and we'll we'll see what the group of people want to do and where people want to take things and whether it you know is there another funding bid for other stuff. I mean, you know, there's clear you know clearly the demand, but you know, as a as a group, as the rethink group, um, we we meet separately every week as well as a just a straightforward support group because you know just having a space to to talk about things is so is so important um and um we you know as a group we've got um in a couple of weeks we've got the mp for withington jeff smith coming to talk to us about reform of the mental health act um we've got the rethink campaigns team coming next week to brief us um, at the end of March, we've got an artist called Paul Pickford, who's coming to help us draw a mental health superhero. We were talking a lot about how when you, if you struggle with your mental health or you have a family member, there's a, there's a lot of paperwork. Um, and I think anybody who's experienced any kind of disability or health challenges will know that there are so many challenges, just getting appointments, getting two appointments, appointments being cancelled, benefits, I know housing there's all this kind of complicated yeah. stuff and you know so we kind of we you know we were joking the other week that you have to be a bit of a, a bureaucratic superhero to get through this stuff we were like right so we need we need this superhero you know it's not got a cape you've got you know you've got a briefcase and you've got your you know, all this stuff all this you know your, your paperwork file and yeah so so we've we've got that coming up um and and you know hopefully we'll have you know well, 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 we'd love to have Neil back at the group again, and we have a little photography club each week, and sometimes a book club and different speakers. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, just things things to keep us keep us going. And not all superheroes wear capes. Some are carrying the briefcases. <laughs> exactly. But it's interesting that you do a lot of um, variety of different projects and hopefully once COVID um, decides to do one and people can start to meet again in person that, you, you know, we can lift up some of these face to face um, projects. Because I was reading on the website as well about like the pottery as well and those kind of works. What kind of pottery is it people do? Is it um, more like doing bowls and cups or is it what kind of pottery? Yeah, so that was a session that we we did through Old Bank as well. Um, it's been a really great venue for us because you've got all these creative people coming through, and we've been able to to make those links. And that that was another really popular session. So um, it was making some it, pots really, and it was just from um, I forget the technical term, but you you know it's um it's all handmade. It's not on a you know. You don't use any equipment. You get a lump of clay, and you just form it into something. So, um, you know, They're coiling, Mary. Was it coiling by any chance? You know, it wasn't coiling. So there you go. There's another session that we could do, <laughs> Charlotte and I. You know, it just. You know, the more that we've done the art, mm -hmm. you know, the artistic work, the more it strikes me that there's, you know, there's so much to be to be gained from it, and so and you know, and so much of it is about the process. You know, I think what's brilliant about Neil's sessions is that um, it's not about the end result necessarily. It's about, and, and actually that's quite hard for some people to, to sit there and go, yeah, but what am I actually, what am I actually doing? Because we're so used in our lives to being said, right, here's a task, complete it, get it done. But actually this is a chance to just sit there and, and just be, and you don't have to be anything more than that. You know, we, we, we're often, we often feel inadequate in our lives, don't we? You know, like we should be something better and something more. And, and I think that's at the root of so much of people's, you know, feelings of, um, you know, poor mental health. And actually just to be, just to be told that you've got a piece of paper and, do you know, what, you can just fill it how you like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, and that, that's just, it's, it's really simple, but it's kind of quite liberating, but also quite challenging. And I think it's that artistic process of not, it doesn't matter if you're making a pot that's any 
good necessarily or did but did you enjoy doing it and did you just get something out of sitting there with other people for an hour um, and, and being together with one another and and making that connection and it's yeah that that's really powerful in itself thank you and a piece of paper though it can be absolutely anything it could be a letter it could be a poem it could be an airplane it could be absolutely anything and i think that is what's good about art and using people's creative minds and mm. charlotte you're studying um the psychology masters and art um at MMU how's that going for you at the moment and um, what what do you want to do with your degrees so um I have done a BA in art um at MMU and I'm currently doing a psychology conversion at UCLan um which is a master's so my sort of goal is to um go into like psychological well-being and integrate in that um like an artistic practice so um and open up this sort of perspective of art as being a, like a grounding um like practical sort of process that that isn't like it isn't restricted to people that that have got like art degrees and mm -hmm. things like that because i think it's quite interesting how art is presented in like schools a lot of it is like what you were saying earlier about um like make like every, everything looking the same like I feel like art in schools is about like you know copying a still life and like making sure it's like perfect and a beautiful imitation of of like what it is in real life but in fact like I think an art school education makes you see like that there are so many different ways of like practicing art and a lot of that is like very interconnected with well-being and with like with like um grounding practices so and i know that my practice was when i was when i was at um mmu and um my work was a lot about that uh so i think the why I, why i wanted to turn that into like more of like a practical um like not like a, get get like an actual like certificate in that like in <laughs> in um like psychology and well-being and um being able to like take that and integrate that in into like more formal structures such as like the nhs and things like that where um yeah they have quite like i think they're warming to a more ho holistic approach but it's like a very gradual process um so yeah it's doing like little workshops like these that um kind of prove to people that there is like value in it and I guess worthwhile doing it and people gain a lot from it and I think that's what's really important about the feedback form that me and Mary have like organized and um, we'll, we'll have another feedback form at the end of the sessions to sort of see like how everyone how, how everyone has been feeling after each session individually but also as like a whole how people have responded to it and whether it's actually like a lot of people have already said that it's they they feel that it is already impacting their well-being yep. but like by the end of it we want to see like how is this like series like impacted people specifically so yeah it's really interesting it's it's like it's all very new as well it's like i think integrate art therapy as as a whole is is seen as like i don't know it's quite inaccessible in a way like it's not it's not made for everybody um but doing little things like this where your you know your well-being is considered in like an art based way like i think it's just it's really important and having that holistic approach is it is becoming more normalized and um it's really good <laughs> that it is so it's like neil the one you did the other day um which was where we get close up to the paper and we could draw um little dashes and some people were drawing little circles and so forth for me that was really good because that reminded me of the really mindful drawings where people then colour in different elements because of the level of detail that people went into. Um, it's I, I'm just amazed where you're getting all these ideas from and I'm really excited to see what what else um, is coming up. Are you able to share with us um, any of your no spoilers, uh, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm quite keen to um, for people to sort of engage with drawing in sort of in multiple ways so um you know you're not just kind of sitting there in a certain pose and having your paper at a certain angle 
and um, you know having your head a certain way and what you might be taught when you're doing when you're doing A levels or GCSE, like you kind of said, Charlotte. But I'm kind of interested in people interacting in a different way and using different senses. So like there might be sessions where we'll be um, not using our sense of sight at all. You know, I'll be encouraging people to close their eyes and use a sense of touch and, you know, respond to their sense of touch by making marks. Um, so there's things like that, getting, getting really close to the page, like you said, you know, it kind of invokes a more sort of um, a physical element to it. Um, and the hand sort of one did as well, when we were kind of drawing around our hands, it was like, you, felt, you really felt the weight of your hand when you were pressing down for so long. And when you're sort of so close to the to the to the paper on the on the last session, you you really kind of you could see how blurry the page was being so close to it. So you really thinking about how you were engaging with the with the work and more of the sessions coming up will will do that in different ways. Um, yeah, I don't I won't want to give away too much. Very much. <laughs> so I mean, you, can, you can actually go on my website and read them all. <laughs> You'll have to plug you over Don't tell them that, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be exactly. They won't be exactly the way that they're, they're described on the website. That they are being sort of adapted in different ways. I am actually running this drawing course um, for Lost Running Club at the same time as well. So um, Lost Running Club is part of one of the projects that we're doing at, at work with Santa Practice, um, and with Lost Running Club, all of the ideas that I kind of built. 15 ideas I've got on my website they've been sort of adapted to thinking about overlaps between running and art whereas the um the ideas for rethink mental illness have all been sort of moved towards uh, more mindfulness and um sort of the sense of being present um with the thing that you with that you're making and and really have a sense of like sort of bodily um involvement um sort of physical physicality to it like you know there's nothing but you and the drawer and you are kind of um you almost like becoming the same thing in a, in a strange kind of way um rather than sort of you're making something it's like part of the part of your process if that makes sense yeah it's like getting into flow isn't it it's like that state of flow where you're like fully tuned in with something other than like yourself but also it is yourself like it's, it is like being in in yeah. flow state. It's like an extension to um, kind of I talk about the pen tool being an extension to your hand much more than it would be like a paintbrush or mm. any other artistic medium. It's 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 so much more sort of fundamental to, to us. And we've been drawing longer than we've been talking um, or doing anything else. You know, um, drawing is the oldest form of storytelling and um, making sense of the world around us. You know, and that's what that's what we're doing through through making these drawings where um, with kind of making sense of the world around us in a in a in a kind of different way than the way that we would normally experience life but in also the the, the most fundamental and um intrinsic way you know really makes us what makes us human i know and i just love art as an actual medium it's it's just incredible but if we when we're talking about like mental health as well other um groups um, such as like be vocal they go down the singing route and how singing can release the oxytocin I think it is the um, like the hormones that of being in love and you know you could argue that art has that that same kind of effect it can release those sort of chemicals that that do make people feel more grounded and do bring people together as well and I think at the moment with lockdown you know it's important that we've got these kind of groups and some people might prefer to sing, some people might prefer to do art, and you might be happy doing both. You've just got to find that key one which is, is right for you. Mm -hmm. Have either of you ever gone down the singing route at all for, for like mental health and well-being or come across Be Vocal? Be Vocal are just wonderful. I think they're just such, you know, we're so lucky to have... Um, a, a group like that in Manchester um, I don't go along myself but um, I'm just so impressed with by by what they do and what they've managed to achieve in in such a short space of time um, they so we we had um, you know someone from Be Vocal came to talk to our group about the choir 
um you know so we yeah we we they've been really supportive telling their telling their members that go to the choir about the everybody draw course and i think you know you we you know you start to get this there's this amazing community in manchester of different mental health organizations and groups and voluntary charitable and you know i think we, people are really trying to pull together at the moment um to support one another and i think one of the real challenges with with mental health problems is they really isolate people um you can become you know and, and people can feel very alone and like and especially if it's the first time you've experienced the feelings that you're experiencing and um, you don't know you don't know how to deal with them you know and, and people around you maybe don't understand what you're going through um so this is you know it's so much about providing people with a space where they can come and feel feel safe they don't necessarily have to and the beauty of the drawing is they don't necessarily have to talk about their mental health but it but they know they're in a space where it's it's okay if they need to and and that other people might be experiencing similar things and so that yeah trying to counter that feeling of isolation is a really kind of a really important part of all of this um yeah I've probably gone off topic again. I have a tendency. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and where can people go to find out more information about um, we we mental health um, illness? Yeah. So um, so we are as a as a group. So we're a, we're a completely volunteer run group. Um, but we are registered with the national charity Rethink Mental Illness, um, and so we have a page on their website where you can go and find out. All of the group. So if you just anyone can just search Rethink Mental Illness Manchester Group and we will pop up. Um, and we've got some information up there about our every everybody draw sessions. Neil, you should definitely plug your website as definitely. well. And we'll put links below. So <laughs> get it mentioned, Neil. <laughs> um, my website is uh, neilgreenhalf.net. And um, yeah, there's the sort of 15 ideas for drawing on there there's a sort of original sort of 15 week drawing class I did last year in the first lockdown for as part of the, the old bank online um, and there's also um, examples of some of the sort of uh, studio practice I, I you know some of the paintings and video works I make as well plus um, some bits of writing so yeah I've got I've got some like sort of little little essays actually on um, that I've published on Medium. There's links on the website that um, they're, they're quite good as sort of, sort of like examples of, I guess if there was like further reading in, in terms of everybody draw, there's some of the ideas that I sort of around the drawing class have elaborated a little bit in some of those. So yeah, if you wanted to find out for more information about the workings of my mind, <laughs> that would be the place to start. <laughs> Definitely. So you've heard it, guys. Check out check out these links below. Get them clicked. Get following people on social media, and see what they've got in store. And what about yourself, Charlotte? What's going to be next? You're obviously completing your masters. I'm very I'm busy. I'm too. I'm too. I'm too busy to be producing. Yeah, an output at the moment. But uh, getting involved with lots of different voluntary things as well as my masters. Um, yeah, it's a busy time. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for, for joining me this evening and talk, talk, talking about the amazing artwork and about um, well-being. It's, it's been a pleasure to have you all um, join and I'm really looking forward to, to the remainder of the sessions and see what's coming up. And hopefully, you know, I'll carry on doing it after, after this is finished and take it that step further. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Hey, it's been great. Thank you.